Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Country Mama Musings and welcome to yet another Country Mama Musings quickie. Oh, we have gone transcontinental today because we have Daz from my, Auss my Aussie Kitchen and Garden, Daz from Down Under, and I have him off stage in the studio right now. We're going to be bringing him up in just a second. I do want to tell you guys, this back here, this is not my dirty laundry. We might air some dirty laundry here today, but this is not my dirty laundry. This is my stack of crochet. It's just kind of in the corner. So just wanted to get that out there before you guys all start talking about me behind my back about dirty dishes, water bottles, and laundry. So now that I've said that, I want to thank everybody who's coming into the live chat for our quickie tonight. And if you happen to catch this on a replay, make sure you comment in the comments below to let us know you were here. And don't say, I'm sorry, I'm late, or I'm sorry, I missed it. We're just happy you're here, and we're happy that you show up. So we have Little House Off the Gritty Belly Acres, Rambling with the Brooms, Woohoo, Dad's Rocks! And on and on and on. So I will just uh, remind you guys that once we start this quickie, which everybody kind of goes, oh my gosh, what's going on there? It is a rapid fire 10 minute interview with Daz. We're going to start with a little foreplay. We love our innuendos here. That just means he's going to answer four little questions for us or tell us four little facts about his channel and about his life. And then once we're done with our quickie, we'll uh, make sure it was good for both of us and all of you out there in YouTube land. And then we're just going to do some back and forth questioning with Daz. If you have any questions for him, put it over in the comments and then uh, we'll just kind of go from there and see how things go. Hello. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Tiny Tim. Hello, Tim. Hello, Brenda. Dragonflies and Leanne from Mennonite Farmhouse. Lots of people pouring in. I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Let's see if we can get Daz to join us here for a quickie. I think he's all ready. He's warmed up to go. Hey, Fantails! Fantails! What a greeting that is. You have Fantails on the right, Fantails on the left. It's like a song starting already. It's the Fantails shuffle, Daz. You're you're either you're either messing with me. Oh, I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we could count on you straight oh, out of the gate to man. do something funny. I hey, like that an... we got the fantail shuffle going already. I love it. Oh, there you go. It's okay. an old joke, but I can't help myself. We, so. We'll talk about it later. We'll tell people what the big deal is about fantails yeah. if they don't already know. Um, so I love fantails. It's my little nickname with between Daz and I. So Daz, welcome to the quickie. I'm so glad you're here. We've been waiting for a long time to have you up for a country mama quickie. You're my first Australian quickie, I gotta say. Woohoo. Woohoo is right. I'm gonna try That's to keep old. the down under jokes to a minimum during our quickie because that could just go off the rails really fast. <laughs> yep. I, I want to keep my channel. I'm sure you want to keep yours too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So <laughs> let's start out with having a little bit of foreplay. And for those of you who don't know what the foreplay is, we spell it F-O-U-R because I'm going to ask Daz to share with us four random facts about him, his life, his family, his channel, whatever he wants to share with us Four random facts and go. Uh, okay. Um, I'm a gamer. I'm a video gamer. Um, I have been, I mean, I've got, for people that don't know, that's the Atari logo. Um, so, yeah, I've been gaming since the 1970s. Um, I've played pretty much every console that came out until a couple of years ago um, when they started becoming, it was cheaper to buy a car than a gaming console. But, <laughs> yeah. Um but my I have kids one word. I have one word response to that. Pong. Oh yes, definitely. That we had that, we had that console when I was a kid when it first came out. My dad got us what we had pong. It's amazing what how the the difference is between now and then. When pong came out, which if people don't know, it's two lines on a screen that you can move up and down, and there's a square ball that 
bounces around the screen and you've just got to try and slide your thing up and down the screen to get that ball past the other person. Very that's rudimentary. It. That's that's all there is to it. But it now, was everything like in 1976 though, wasn't it? Yeah, but now I was down in my son's room the other day and the new Dying Light game just came out, which I'm sure that went over everyone's head. But he's down there in on a 4K screen with life realistic graphics chasing zombies with baseball bats and homemade weapons and stuff and it's like watching a movie but controlling the movie yourself it's just the difference between my pong and his uh it's just mind-blowing we need to come uh, up with a new game daz based on what you just said zombie pong oh, oh yes Shh. quick it's you and me we'll talk later cut it out of the replay that's that's our <laughs> thing yeah. okay if any we have we need to keep it in though because we have evidence if somebody ever does that we could say we came up with it first and we true. need royalties true that's okay right. so that's one of our four play what's next um okay i mean uh, sorry i just saw <laughs> i just saw in chat because i'm a moderator on your channel that leanne has something that the chat is hidden <laughs> There's nothing like seeing Leanne being moderated. Uh oh. <laughs> Mennonite farmhouse, anyone? Um, yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Sorry. Um, okay, back on topic. Um, I see. I don't know. Um, everyone sort of knows me, I guess, that I'm looking in chat. But for anyone that doesn't know, I'm a retired chef. I used to be work as a chef. Um, I'm qualified. I went through an apprenticeship and everything, and. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, I did work here and there in a few restaurants and even pubs and things. But my main gig for most of my time was I was actually a specialist chef for an airline. And um, I was pretty much making food for rock bands and royalty and famous people. And there's probably super famous people that I would never know that I cooked for. Um <laughs> but some I do. So it was pretty cool. It's a, it's an ego boost to go home and say to my wife, my new wife back in the day, Hey, I just cooked for the red hot chili peppers today or Pearl jam or, you know, it's, yeah, it's um, That's awesome. Yeah. I knew that, but maybe somebody didn't, but I'd still think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, Oh gee, I don't know if I'm supposed to hurry up and give you another two facts. No, because this isn't rapid um, fire. This is just our foreplay. Oh, I just don't want it to take two hours. No, but you can take time with foreplay women like that. Oh, I see. So that's two. Okay. Um, okay, I was trying to think of a, a segue, and then I've got six kids. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's actually nine of us in this house because my eldest has um, a live-in partner. Um, so, yeah, it's it's fun having nine people in the house and trying to cook for nine people. And so in, in a lot of my cooking videos, actually, for instance, my fried rice video, I made so much fried rice that I had comments from people saying, what are you what doing with all that fried rice? Yeah. Like <laughs> normally you watch a video where someone makes fried rice and it's like this little bowl of rice and maybe a small wok. And here I am almost with a bucket trying to get it all in and, in fact, I made two big batches, but I'm feeding nine people. So generally, oh, yeah. what are the yeah. breakdown of your children? How many boys? How many girls? Um, see, so this is like asking me birthdays and ages. I'm hopeless. All right. There's. <laughs> um, I don't want ages and dates of birth. I just want to know how many boys, how many girls. All right. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. No, nobody knows this on YouTube at all. And okay, I've never mentioned this. Daz exclusive. So it's an Alicia exclusive. Okay. Um, my kids, my eldest is transgender. Mm -hmm. Um, and is transitioning to male. And one of my other teenagers prefers to be uh, non gender specific mm -hmm. and my another one of my children actually is also non-gender specific 
Um, and then, yeah, I've then got three boys. Um, so, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, I, I made it complicated when I shouldn't. <laughs> so I can oh. see why you struggled for a second. Because, yeah, because there, there are different uh, terminologies and different lifestyles that we're all kind of getting into in the world now. So it's wonderful. Yeah, so, yeah, I've not shared that with YouTube and everything. And, um, yes, yeah, so there you go. There's a um, – so, yeah, it's just um, – like I'm obviously fine with it. Um, me well, being sure. a parent, um, I I can remember when my eldest um, my eldest was living away from us at the time, um, and I got a, a text late at night um, saying I need to talk to you and everything and blah blah blah. And I got really, it was like maybe one o'clock in the morning. And um, I need to call you. It's really urgent. And um, I got this whole speech about emotions and everything. And I thought it was a self-harm call mm. or something like that. And I was terrified. And then they said to me, I just want to let you know that I'm gay. And I was like, oh, holy bleep. Oh, I'm so relieved. Oh, yeah. Phew. Um yeah, and uh, and they were like, like seriously, are you okay with it? And I was like, well, you've lived my in child. House. Yeah, you've lived in this house all this time. You've seen the way I talk and your mother talks, and it's a non-issue with us. And um, yeah, so we're very open, uh, very open-minded, and uh, to everything. Um, as as I always say to my kids, look, as long as you be a decent human being to you yourselves and other people i do not care whether you have a particular religion um whatever i don't care absolutely Just be a good human being that's all i want absolutely and you said you don't have issue i don't have issue and if you look over in the chat you see everybody in the chat has no issue everybody here is loving and accepting so thank you for sharing that with me daz it was unexpected yeah. and um it is, it is the exclusive, and I am appreciative that you felt comfortable enough to share that with not only me, yeah. but with yeah. your people that love you over there in the chat as well. Thanks, so everyone. That's three things you've shared. We've got one more thing in our foreplay before we get in with our quickie. Oh, man. Um, gee, what? I'm trying to think of things people haven't seen on my channel. or um, Yeah, something something unique that we don't know. Um, Besides dinosaur uh, milk. Um. I don't know. I can only think of like my traveling, but I've probably I've spoken about that too, though. But um, I've, ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking well, around the room trying to think of. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? I've okay. got something. Okay. Um, I used to have what was not officially, but very likely Australia's biggest Simpsons collection. What? Um, years ago um but i went for because of my contacts with retail and stuff back in the day i went very much for um advertising materials and things and hard to get things and yeah my house was one particular section of the house back in the day a family room amount of simpsons memorabilia and advertising and a six foot tall robotic homer that would talk and um was used as a shop display and i will tell then, you what yeah. daz are you still are you still really fond of the simpsons uh yeah yeah if i ever find it i have somewhere here in my hoarding memorabilia i do have a really neat thing signed by nancy cartwright because i met her ah oh, cool the kids wow. and I have met Nancy Cartwright That's and cool. she signed a little doodad for me. And it's, I've hung on to it because that was kind of cool. But mm. if you're a super fan, I'll, if I find it, I'll send it over to you someday. Oh, so for those bad. of you who don't know, Bart Simpson, the voice is female mm. and she's, she's shorter than me and I'm only five two. Yeah. But she's yeah. really, really a neat lady. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was in, um, was it Herman's head back in the day? I don't know. Yeah. That, that so, was, okay. that, you got me on that one. All right, so I guess actually 
That'd be number five. I'm cheating and giving you an extra one, but Ooh, I, extra foreplay. Uh, it's, Go for I, it. What can I say? But yeah, He's adding I'm, a thumb. Dad's approves. I'm very big on um my music and TV and stuff, um, especially from back in the day. So yeah, if you started talking about say Punky Brewster and all that sort of stuff and a lot of people, Miami Vice and the white suits and stuff like that. And Jim had one of those um, jackets. I was. You keep cutting okay. out. You keep cutting out. I'm sorry. The kids, what's the time? Oh, no, the kids aren't home from school. If yeah, sorry. Your, your video is fine. It's the audio. I keep losing the audio every once in a while. Okay. That happens to me often, unfortunately, with my internet. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want you to know that if you see me going like this, that's what's going on. Okay, cool. Um, Daz and I were actually in a live a few months ago where he says, if I was in on this contest, I'd give Alicia a run for her money because I was pretty quick with some <laughs> answers. And so Daz is up on his trivia, but I was doing pretty good too. Good day, chat. Oh, look at everybody saying hello. Okay, so that is our uh, our foreplay. Are you ready for your quickie, Daz? Oh, yeah. Let's, yep. Like I said, you got an extra one there. So I'm fired up and ready to go. <laughs> oh, a girl always loves a little extra. I've got my questions here. They're shuffled up. I don't know what order they're in. I've had a migraine for the last 24 hours. So I'm not even sure if I can read them. I've got these squinty little eyes, and everybody's furry right now and fuzzy. Even Daz with his beard is fuzzy and furry. So I'm going to read them. We're going to start. It is 9 47. We're going to go for 10 minutes. Here we go. And then we'll chat afterwards. So here we go. Oh, just grabbing my seatbelt. One second. Strap in. I'm strapping in. I've got the seatbelt. Behaving myself. Behaving uh, myself. That could have, that really could have gone bad. <laughs> you can't put anything past Daz. I'm telling you. I, I know. Okay, guys, here we go. Daz, what's your favorite family tradition? Oh. Uh, um oh this i'm i'm going blank we do have them um okay one is for me um in seinfeld there's a quote these pretzels are making me thirsty where one of the characters tries to say it all the time to get it right um every time my wife and my kids go out in the car on a trip somewhere I always make sure that's the very last thing I say to them in case something happens to me here at home and I'm gone. So my ever my last ever words to my family will be, these pretzels are making me thirsty. Oh, that's it's unique and neat and it's heartfelt. I love that. Okay, question number two. What is your favorite book? Um I I've always been into audiobooks. I personally prefer um, a really good person that can narrate a book and pass on the story. So I've got a lot of experience with audiobooks. That also comes from when I used to work overnight by myself. I could have headphones on. Um, but I did read a few books beforehand. And, um, well, it can be an audiobook too. We all learn and take information in different ways. It can be an audiobook. Okay, well, Stephen King's got to be there, and I would probably say the Dark Tower series was incredible from Stephen King. Um, only okay. Stephen King can write a fantasy story, and I don't know if this is a bit of a spoiler. If no one wants a Dark Tower spoiler, mute the channel now. Yes. Sorry. Plug your ears. No, I'm telling okay. him to plug oh. your ears. Sorry, okay. but I only had one finger. Minor spoiler, only Stephen King could write a fantasy story and have the characters visit him in real life in his own book. That was that was a trip. Wow. Yeah. It okay. was cool. Yeah. Um give me an item on your bucket list. Um oh, number 1 would and it will relate to everyone here including yourself. Um my wife and I have been wanting to take our whole family to the USA for about three months on a road trip. Um, that's been, I've been to the USA about half a dozen times myself and once with my wife. And we always said that we would take all the kids over to the USA and 
not only do the Disney and, you know, the theme parks, but show them real America and just simple things like, um, believe it or not, they want to go to Walmart and they want to go to um, JC Penney's and like we have Target and Kmart and stuff here. But um, yeah, so that is by far the number one thing. What is holding us back other than the obvious thing going around the world at the moment um, is that airfares are incredibly expensive. And oh, I imagine. Most of us would be paying as adults. So it's that's a big dream, that one. It's going to stay in the bucket for a little while, but at least it's there. But, yeah, I would love to get over there and just plan to just meet up with all of you at different points over time. It would uh, be sensational. Well, when you do, the welcome mat's always open here. Open, out, yeah. down, something. I'd love to see if you and the family come out. This is a new question in my little repertoire here. Are you ready for this one, Daz? Here we go. Here we go. Would you rather burp or fart glitter? Um, oh, man. Me farting is a whole issue like joke and issue in this house but i'll say burp because it's it's more visual whereas um glitter in my pants would just not be fun my god glitter in my pants sounds like a song oh well, seriously i'd be you know when you see toddlers walk around with nappies that haven't been emptied in the saggy and stuff like that you could imagine me by the end of the day walking around the house with a saggy pair of pants and glitter falling out the sides or <laughs> the the bottom of my pants or whatever. I'm envisioning an hourglass when you turn it over and the sand just runs and you see <laughs> glitter coming out both sides of your nappy. <laughs> yeah, and I love that you guys call it nappy. Oh, oh yeah. Here we go. Yeah, um, uh, Annette, glitter, glitter in the beard. Oh, glitter in the beard. Daz, are you a dog man or a cat man? Oh, dog. Dog. Um, I've, it's funny, I've always detested cats and I'm allergic to them to start with, but I really have had a dislike for cats. Um, but then a couple of years ago at our previous property, um, this little kitten turned up to our property and guess who took to it and had it inside with him and had a very long relationship with sneezing and yes. it, yeah um, um so i'm now i would like to have a a short-haired gray cat with green eyes um my eldest has one and she's actually actually has a little bit longer but she's absolutely beautiful but i'm a dog person and unfortunately i've had i've lost too many so it's too heartbreaking. I won't. I won't have a pet like a dog anymore. Been there. I know what that is. Which movie made you laugh the most? Um. Oh wow. Um. Sorry, I'm laughing now because I just saw Wombat by Belly Acres in the chat. But um. Oh, you know what? There's probably no um. A lot. Okay, let's say um, you guys call it airplane. We yes, it, it was marketed as flying high over here. Yes, um, and I think airplane slash flying high was I uh, was Zucker Brothers was the real the first real sort of movie that went big time that had all that silly humor and the legend Leslie Nielsen and. Um, yeah, just uh, half the jokes I can't even repeat here. I mean, I know, I know, and and don't call me Shirley. Exactly. There, I was in a live earlier today, and somebody dropped a little bit of airplane quote, and I was like, I know what they're doing, but I left it alone because it wasn't yeah. live. But I saw yeah. it. Um, Daz, what's your favorite television show that you would like to have a guest appearance on? Um. Oh, you know what? I would, there's two, um, The Office, um, either, now this is controversial, either the UK or the US version. Yes, um, Ricky Gervais, right? Yeah, look, for me, The Office, the UK version of The Office, the original, 
was absolute genius and it's probably one of the best television shows I've ever seen in my life. Um, and then when the US um, remade it, it was a bit sketchy at the start because they were pretty much cloning episodes. But that then went on to be its own beautiful thing and The Office is just... US is... Um, for those people that don't know, I was talking to Alicia quickly beforehand and The Office came up and yeah, um, that and Survivor. Um, for me, Survivor is got to be the best reality slash competition show out there. I agree. And, um, I, would, I would love to be out there complaining for... I'll say a couple of days because they'll kick me off because <laughs> I want to know, and this is not written down. Who was your favorite survivor? Not oh, winner, geez. but just survivor. Um, oh, wow. There is. I want to know if it's mine too, because I'm, I'm saying I, I, mine in my head. I'm okay. It's hard. I'm going to say Russell hands because he was such a, a crafty player. But at the moment in Australia, for anyone that watches Survivor, we actually have Sandra um, on Australian Survivor right now. I'm and, not watching it right now. I don't have TV. Yeah, okay. So, um, okay, Boston Rob, there you go, Blands. Boston Rob, what a legend. Yeah, it, that's a hard question because... My um, all-time favorite is Rupert. I love Rupert. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, see, that, there's too many. Rupert there is. Was, the moment... You know, the thing I remember the most about Rupert was, I don't know if you remember this, and but anyway, you think? in his very first episode, Rupert gets off the boat, and what they had to do was go and collect a bunch of stuff in a town. Yes. While everyone's collecting stuff, Rupert's still in the opposition people's he shoes. He stole the shoes. That cracked the me up. He, the minute he stole the shoes, I was like, yep. I love him. I yep. love him. He's yep. my guy. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, Rupert is, yeah, it's hard to pick a favourite because, um, and look, you can't go past Richard Hatch, the original winner. Um, a lot of people didn't like him, but, man, for something that was brand new and no one knew where the show was going, his head was up there and he mm -hmm. messed with them and he won because he was, he outwitted, outlasted, outplayed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm not up on the current seasons, but we used to watch, I think I... Up until like season 15, 16, I had not missed an, uh, a season. So, but we're behind because we don't have regular TV. So yep. um, we're going over on time, but we're having so much fun. Let's keep going. Sorry. This is a chef question for you, Chef okay. Ooh. If you were a potato, I'm a potato. What way would you like to be prepared? Um, oh, I think bakes because you can have it's it's like a hairstyle you can have so many different toppings you can change the okay. toppings all the time all right so, yeah there you go <laughs> what celebrity do you find to be super annoying don't oh. say me because i'm not celebrity status yet save that uh, time. i need to think now sorry you just took my answer from me um <laughs> no um, oh wow, there's a lot. Um, um, oh man, um, I'm going blank. Um, female comedian, red hair. Um, Kathy. Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin and Andy Dick. Um, <laughs> both red hair. Can't, can't stand both of them. Can't. Stand and them. They're just too loud and over the top for me. I'm a little self-conscious that I colored my hair red this week because yeah. you've got a thing against redheads, <laughs> even though this is like a cherry cola, so I think I'm okay. Uh, uh, Daz, what was your very first job? Um. Oh, gee. I guess technically it was babysitting. Um, How about your very first job where you got a paycheck? Uh, apprentice chef. Okay. Yep. All right. So yep. you just kind of jumped right into that and then continued that on. Okay. Yeah. I um, pretty much um, in Australia, high school goes to year 12 and 
back though, back in those days, you would finish at year 12 and then you would go jump into the workforce and either get an apprenticeship or find a job. Um, these days, it's now you get to year 12 and like my kids, um, they're looking at university and further education and stuff like that. But yeah, so pretty much um, at the end of year 11 for me, I was accepted into two apprenticeships um, as a chef and obviously I picked one over the other. Okay. This is kind of, this is going to be an interesting one here. Daz, what's your proudest achievement? My kids. Your kids. I love it. I um, love it. Dad. Oh, no, so, sorry. My Go Aussie ahead. garden and kitchen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> It's got to be the kids and the family, right? I'm so glad to hear yeah. you say that. Yeah. What is the one, it's like I'm like this. What is the one thing that you would like to do this year, 2022, that you've never done before? Besides Ooh. have a quickie with Country Mama Musings. Um, again, I need to think because you've taken my answer from me. Uh, I have to stop doing that. I know. Just, yeah, you need to let me answer these things, please. <laughs> Oh, uh, gee. Um, I think it would have to be what I said earlier about taking my my family to the USA. Okay. Um, if for some reason a bird um, leaves a deposit in the backyard and a money tree grows from that, um, it's probably the first thing I'll do if I come into money like that is, well, look. I've got to get over my agoraphobia and actually leave the house, but that's a pretty good incentive to a money um, tree would a money tree would really prompt you to start thinking in that direction, wouldn't it? Yeah, but yeah, I'd love, love, love to if I had the if I was able to definitely get my family over there and um, yeah, do that. You, you used the word segue earlier in our interview, so this kind of just goes right into the segue for this one. What's the weirdest thing you've ever done for money? Um, I'm trying to think because I used to do years ago, um, I started a community group for um, a town where I used to live and it got massive and we did some charity things and stuff and I did some silly things, embarrassing things for that. And I can't think of anything right now. Um, what did I do for money? Oh, I, oh man, I can't think. Um, I think one thing I did was I sung the Gilligan's Island theme to the Australian national anthem. Uh, hang on. I think, no, I sung the Australian National Anthem to the Gilligan's Island theme. So you sang the words to the Australian National Anthem, but to the tune of Gilligan's Island. Yeah, now that you've said that, I think it would have been the other way around because you guys are so patriotic over there and good on you, and that's fantastic. We're very patriotic here, but it's a bit of an Aussie thing here that – we're shockers for not knowing all the words to our national anthem. So I'm guessing I actually sung the words to Gilligan's. Oh, it's so terrible that I would know the words to Gilligan's Island more than my national anthem. So, yeah. Um, so I think it was actually me singing the Gilligan's Island words to the Australian national anthem's theme. So, nice. Um, <laughs> I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd pay to see that you know what this is funny because you've already answered this one what if there was one reality show you could watch for the rest of your life we all know it's survivor yeah. um if you could eat only one food for the rest of your life what would it be ice cream cutting you off straight away ice cream talking over you ice cream ice cream have i made it clear that it's ice Gosh, cream? i'm glad you cut me off because that could have gone off the rails ice cream ice cream I want to see cream. in the chat. I want to see in the chat. Thumbs up. Do you guys want me to ask more questions or do you guys want to start asking Daz some questions and we'll go just kind of into a regular <sighs> live? Let me know what you want. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> if I you want guys it, want, maybe. if you want some more questions uh, for the quickie, we'll extend the quickie. 
ice cream. Give me a thumbs up if you want me to read some more. Everybody's, well, I see thumbs up and ice cream. So, Daz, are you up for a few more questions? I am, and it looks is, like Scott trying to. And Daz approves, and Scott approves with her tractor, three tractors, apparently. <laughs> okay. Daz, hey, what, is, what is something besides me that you're obsessed with right now? Again, you've got to stop answering my questions. You're throwing me off. Um, <laughs> So now I've got to try and think of something else again. <laughs> um, something I'm obsessed with. Um, um, oh, man, there's got to be something. Um, oh, that one's really got me stumped. So I'm just trying we'll to We'll say think. obsessed um, or a guilty pleasure. Oh, gee. Um, and don't say YouTube because everybody says YouTube. Yeah, it's no, it's. I'm just trying to look around the room and um. Oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, you know what? Dehydrating. I'm obsessed with dehydrating at the moment. I, okay. I have dehydrated. Like the kids need to watch out. I'm. I'm going to try and get one of them into the dehydrator soon. It's like, <laughs> I'm. I'm surprised I haven't dehydrated a shoe yet. I've. Um, have you dehydrated uh, marshmallows yet? Oh, yeah, and that was one of the first things I did, and they just did not last. It was – what was the point? Because they all got eaten straight away, and I was like, oh. they're fantastic, but where are they now? Yeah, those went in our area. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. In the last week, when did you feel appreciated? Oh, wow. Um this is going to sound. This is going to sound soppy, but probably at some point where I had done a video on YouTube, or when I was live on maybe on Lisa's live, or when I was live myself. Um, yeah, I'm just finding that um, this big group of people that we all have become to know, and the community, and I don't want to get soppy, but um, there's very much a mutual respect and love and caring and appreciation. And um, there's things that go on here at home too, but um, but definitely my day, my routine now is definitely involves backwards and forwards between um, yourself and other people as well. And yeah, it, it's changed me for the better. Isn't it nice, though, that in your life right now you can say, I'm feeling so appreciated I can't nail down one thing? Because it's, yeah. it's, it's a perpetual in different avenues and in different formats that you're starting to feel that appreciation from this community that you have immersed yourself in and your home life. I especially, like yeah, it's, I don't want to go on too much, but especially from as I've said before, a year ago, I didn't talk to people and everything. And I've, I'm now here. I am now, which is crazy. So yeah. Awesome. Um, Let's see. Daz, what is a skill that you think everyone should have? Oh, gee. Um, you know what? Cooking, cooking. Um, there's going to be a time where um, you're, quite simply just hungry whether times are bad or whatever and stuff like that and i think it's a skill people have to have i mean um you need to be able to you know make food properly and know the basics get, you get yeah and yeah I, I don't know what to say just i think cooking yeah um Kevin. you know um we were you and I were talking rice earlier mm -hmm. and when Papa Jim and I were first married and we, we had to move back in with my in-laws for a short time and my mother-in-law and I we took we kind of did shared meals where she would do part of it and then I would do part of it and yep. so I told her I wanted to make beef stroganoff and Yum. she was going to do the rice and I grew up on minute rice 
So I made the beef stroganoff part and then she said, okay, the rice is browned. And I said, okay. So I scooped up the rice and put it on a plate and I covered it in stroganoff and I gave it to my father-in-law and he bit into that. And I'm surprised he didn't kill me because he erupted. He was so mad because he <laughs> almost broke his teeth because he bit into that rice that only had only been browned. It was like a long grain wild rice and she oh, only wow. browned it crunchy and it was crunchy and i didn't know because my mother never taught uh, me how to cook rice oh man uh, um, um, just for the, sorry just for the record um hay fever it, it seems to be a thing with me being live i've got hay fever so i'm not crying at alicia's rice everybody i mean <laughs> it was tra it, it was tragic but it is tragic fever. it is tragic um if you could meet any historical figure besides me, uh, who would you like to meet and why? Again, you need to stop doing this. Um, all right. I'm a repeat offender. Um, oh, man. That's, oh, there's so many. Um, oh, wow. I would... Uh, I've gone completely blank. I um, probably um, Jules Verne. Um, oh, nice. um, twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Yeah, Jules Verne had such a vision for like science fiction, and um, I, that's probably something I could have said about earlier about me was I'm very much into science fiction and horror and stuff. Um, but yeah, probably Jules Verne because we're talking about a guy that wrote books and created stories about time machines and all sorts of things, Martians and stuff. And the technology and the information was not around back in the day for a lot of this stuff. And this man has pulled this stuff out of his mind and made incredibly good stories and um yeah it would be really interesting just to sit down and you know see what's going through his head what his thoughts were for the future and things like that i love that answer okay let's do one more question and then i see that people are like jeez i got tons of questions so people want to ask you questions so we're going to do one more and then we're <laughs> going to open it up to questions in the chat <laughs> Carla. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to end it with this one. Daz, if you could be any animal, what would you be? A bird. A bird. Any any particular bird or just any bird? Um, uh, straight away, that was my easiest answer to give because um, I think any. I just love the idea of going into flight and um, – this morning I was trying to record. In fact, I did record some kookaburras um, in a tree behind me. About five of them all landed on a branch. And I haven't played it back yet, but I think it's going to be grainy because um, I had to zoom in because I was so high. But while I was filming them, two of the kookaburras jumped off the branch and pretty much stuck their heads forward and put the wings out and just glided past me. And wow. that's got a that must be the best feeling in the world. I would love to be able to fly and just glide like that. And oh, that would be neat. Yeah. Okay, well, Daz, we've had our extended quickie. We made it last quite a while. You're my longest quickie as far as the quickie part so far. But people are asking questions. So I'm, and I, I appreciate everybody in the chat and forgive me for not reading the chat, but I wanted to give Daz my full attention <laughs> While we were having our quickie, there's nothing worse than having a distracted quickie. So I'm <laughs> going to go over now to the chat. We'll start pulling some questions up on the screen. If you did a question earlier and I missed it, please put it in again because there's no way I'm going to be able to scroll back and find it. And yes, please hit the thumbs button. So let's see what we've got here. Here we go. Can I, if I, oh, sorry. Sorry. No, I was, okay. Oh, actually, no. There you go. That is, uh, Grace and Fire will help me out there. Um, curry. 
uh, definitely Curry. And I was actually just going to say, if Alicia didn't mind, um, I just wanted to say that I did notice a few comments such as Donna uh, mentioning Curry. Um, when you asked me about my favorite food and I said ice cream, Curry is so close to being there. Um, but yeah, um, Grace and Fire, definitely Curry. Um, I, yeah, um, just briefly, if you don't know, I was lucky enough to live in Malaysia for about four years when I was a teenager. Um, my dad was in the Australian Air Force and we got to eat the food over there and become accustomed to it. And that started my passion for Asian food. And I think if you were to look at my cooking videos, actually in my channel, I think a lot of my videos are probably stir fry curry. Um, there's a lot of Southeast Asian, Asian influence for sure. Um, in fact, we probably as a family here, um, in fact, my wife has got rice going now tonight. Um, she's making an Asian chicken. We would eat rice probably f uh, maybe four, possibly five days a week sometimes. Wow. Yeah. So Lisa has a question for you. Uh, she wants to know how, how in the world did you make this cookie last so long, guys? Um, skill. Skill and skill alone. That's what she said. <sighs> That's right. That's what she said. That's okay. Belly Acres wants to know, Daz, have you ever caught your beard in the soup pot? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have actually. I have. I have. I got something here. The amount of times I don't have anything here. The amount of times I've had a fork or a spoon and I've gone. <laughs> it's not good. And the yeah, there'd be I don't know, like say if I'm eating chips or say fries and somehow some hair will get attached to it and you It's get a bit nutty. And, <laughs> oh, it's horrible. <laughs> but speaking of that, I went live two day two days ago. And some of you might have seen in my live that I showed you a hot dog that was sitting aside that I never finished eating. Um, just before I went live, I realized I had not eaten and I knew I'd be on for a couple of hours. So I quickly went and grabbed this hot dog and microwaved it and everything. And, and I'm sitting here and I'm setting up StreamYard and everything. And I'm taking some bites out of the hot dog and putting it down and getting all my settings and headphones. And I look at myself on StreamYard and... You guys say ketchup, but I had tomato sauce in my beard all the way down here. If I had not looked at StreamYard, I would have gone live with ketchup all the way down here. So then I go and wash it. No big deal. Just stick my face in the sink and wash it. I washed it, looked in the mirror, and I had like a pink circle on my chin here. And I'm like, I can't go. And I, I pray, hand on heart, this is so true. I am minutes from going live and I've got my face in the sink and I'm going like this <laughs> and put my head sideways and with the water running and going like this and, <laughs> and panicking that I was going to have this circle of red in my face. It would have been a conversation starter. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Living a rogue life wants to know, Daz, what is your favorite shoe to wear? Okay. Um, this is a great... This is a great one for our cultural differences. Carla, a thong. <laughs> so over here in Australia, we call flip-flops thongs. Um, we know what a thong is. We, I guess we call a thong a We call a them bikini. thongs too. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely flip-flops. Um, in fact, I was only saying to my wife this morning, um, I broke another pair and... I have them strategically placed around the house at different doors and everything. So when I go to different yards, which is not good because um, I share a border with a forest and we've got, I don't know, I think we've got maybe half a dozen of the world's deadliest snakes in this country. Yeah. And it's, I have had one of the most deadliest snakes, snakes in my yard and right here beside me at my door a few times. So you know I, my mother-in-law. Yeah. 
Oh, Tiny Tim wants to know what is the size of your property. Um. Okay, Tim. Um. Yeah. Look, I. It's funny you ask that because um, we're only like a half acre. Um, I feel bad sometimes because I do try and say in my videos, like in one of my videos about my orchard, when I was saying I, I've, I've got like fifty fruit trees and berry bushes and stuff, and but I'm only on a half acre and. I don't want to deceive people. I'm not trying to tell people like it's not my Aussie farm or my Aussie homestead. I, I specifically made my channel, my Aussie garden and kitchen because I'm not on a farm, but I guess because of the bush beside me and we do have a big looking yard, I guess an open yard. It quite often um, people will ask me about the farm and if I'm, why I don't have um, cattle and stuff like that. But yeah, um, so I'm not trying to present myself as a farmer or no, having a large property. You, you have strategically laid out the property that you do have to get the best you can from it with your crops to, and your orchard. I wish I could start again. I, I would love to just, now that I know a bit more from watching everyone's channels and stuff on YouTube, I would like to just, and I'm very close to actually all the garden beds scrapping it and starting again hmm. yeah redesigning interesting trees are a bit harder <laughs> the trees would be difficult your orchard would be difficult for sure uh grace and fire wants to know if you've done a video on curry didn't she didn't know about it until she lived in england and her british friends made it for her yes um yeah i've got a couple of curries uh grace and fire um i've got an awesome chicken and lime curry um which is uh it is so good it's very fresh and fragrant and i have a curry tree um here so i use fresh curry leaves wow um, and also i've got a what i call a peanut butter chicken curry on my channel as well and that's if everyone's familiar with satay um it's like a peanut a spicy peanut sauce in malaysia um it's too spicy for my kids, so I've modified that with peanut butter. And it's essentially a chicken potato and peanut butter curry that doesn't burn. It is wow. divine. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Miss Brenda over at Redbird Farm wants to know, Daz, how long did it take you to grow your beard that long? Yeah, Brenda, g'day, mate. Um, I would say I've had it for about seven days now. Um, <laughs> No, I um, I oh, I'm just trying to think. It would be twenty twenty years. Um, we had a little girl pass away when she was born, and I was clean shaven at the time, and I decided there and then that I would grow a beard and keep the beard to remember her. Mm. Um, I've got her her name and date of passing and stuff tattooed on my arm as well. Um, but yeah, my beard is actually my, I guess my ongoing memory and um, yeah, it's, that's why it's I actually comforting. have a long, it's, it's comforting. It's, that's why I have a long beard. It's and Carla not, says she, she loves the story behind your beard. Um, okay. And so that answered Tim's question, how long it's been since you've been clean shaven. And then Grace and Fire yeah. wants to know, what's the best way to eat Vegemite? You have a video on that, don't you? Oh, that's, hmm, that's funny. You should say, if you go to my channel. If we, um, if, if we have a mod that would drop Daz's link a few times, that would be great too. Um, yeah, um, Grace and Fire. Um, I actually, oh, I'm warning you now, I... I was actually talking to Alicia and some of the other ladies that I'll talk to on Instagram when I was making this video about Vegemite that it was getting to like 40 minutes long. Like you just don't make 40 minute videos on some things, but I've got a 40 minute video on how to prepare Vegemite, um, its history and all sorts of stuff. And I totally expect people just to skim through it and find the parts they're interested in. But Vegemite is such, it's, um, 
something we're so proud of in this country and so many of us enjoy that I didn't want to cut the video down to five minutes because I wanted to put it out there. And um, But to answer your question, um, I guess the most common way we eat Vegemite is we spread it on toast. How thick or thin is up to you. But I, I do like to put Vegemite into um, vegetable or beef soups and some stews um, because it's it's got that um, – it's almost like adding a salty beef stock cube, um, concentrated beef stock cube to your meal. So, yeah. Um, so long story short, Vegemite on toast is the most common and enjoyable way, but I do cook with it in soups and stews occasionally. Um, I don't want to try and put it out there that, hey, I'm an Aussie and I put Vegemite in everything because I don't. And we it would don't. almost be blasphemous, wouldn't it? I beg your pardon? It would almost be blasphemous. <laughs> Here's an interesting one because you got a lot of comments about Vegemite and everything, and I missed some of them. Uh, but Leanne wants to know, Daz, do you ever put pickle juice in soups? No, but I put pickle juice in my stroganoff. You were talking about stroganoff earlier. Really? Yeah. Um, I I can't stand pickles. And I don't know about you guys over there, but over here in Australia, um, when McDonald's came to Australia, McDonald's brought over this whole thing about putting a pickle on a burger. Putting pickles on burgers are not an Australian thing. So if you go to, we call it Macca's over here, not McDonald's. In fact, McDonald's actually market themselves over here. Like they're called McDonald's on the signs, but in their advertising over here, McDonald's actually market themselves as Maccas because <laughs> um, we abbreviate everything. Um, but if you go to Maccas, it's not uncommon to see pickles on light bulbs and windows and the roof because people take out the pickle and sling the pickle. Um, I guess it's a bunch it's, of pickle slingers. Pickle slingers, that's right. But, um, yeah, so um, I don't eat pickles, but I absolutely love to make a stroganoff and pour pickle juice into that stroganoff and just give it that hint of that uh, piquant flavour that... The acidity? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, unfortunately... Well, I guess not unfortunately. I throw pickles to the chickens if they want to eat them or not. But sure. I will buy a jar of pickles with um, juice specifically for a stroganoff. Wow. I'll have to try that next time I make my faux beef stroganoff since I don't do the beef anymore. Oh, behave, behave. Uh, so, uh. <laughs> Jillian Carey say you sp they spray the mites on their veggies, but you eat them? There's these cultural differences again, Daz. That's. And yep. yes, he eats them with fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> hello. Uh, I used to be able to do it so well. I used to be able to say, hello, Clarice. Oh, creepy. Hello, Clarice. That really did send a shiver up my spine. <laughs> oh, Silence of the Lambs. Love it. Danny says, I'll keep my pickles on my burgers and you can keep your fried egg. I've had a fried egg on a burger. Hey, um, there's nothing wrong with a fried egg. You're you're having a go at my fried egg on nasi goreng, which just happens to be a video on my channel. But, um, <laughs> hey, if millions of Indonesians put a fried egg on their rice and they claim it as their national dish, I'm not arguing. I, I think I've tried a, I think I've tried a, a fried egg before on a burger. Oh, sorry, fried egg on the burger. Sorry, I was thinking I I just did the recipe. I just made nasi goreng recently, where it's an Indonesian fried rice where you fry an egg and put an egg on top. Oh, but okay. No. I thought we were still talking burgers. That's you know yeah. just how uncultured I am. No, sorry, totally. Danny would be talking about how Aussies put beets, or we say beetroot. Aussies put beets and eggs on their burgers and we call over in Australia when you go and order a burger from 
um, what we call a takeaway store, a takeaway shop. Uh, it's called a burger with a lot. And in Australia, a burger with a lot is essentially a burger that you would know. Um, we don't put mayonnaise on our burgers. Um, but the patty and the salad items and the cheese and bacon and then um, we'll have beetroot that you can buy, I guess, pickled in a tin in its juice. And there'll be a big slab of beetroot that goes on top of the burger that drips and stains all the paper and everything. Usually pineapple, a, a ring of pineapple from a tin. That yeah. gets yep. And then um, and a fried egg. And that's a burger with a lot in Australia. I think I would enjoy that if it were a veggie burger. You know, um, some of the vegetarian burger, burgers here that are being processed and made now, they do use beet for the coloration. So yeah, why okay. not? Uh, Tiny Tim Posey wants to know, what's the speed limit on the roads in Australia? Yep, and I'm just Googling as you ask that because I'm trying to do the conversion to miles because uh, I'm hopeless doing the conversions. Um, all right, so thanks to Google, um, Tim, um, generally the speed limit on the big highways in Australia is either 100 or 110 kilometers an hour. And as a guide, I've just checked out Google 60. and 100. Yes. 60. Yeah. 62.1371 is 100 kilometers an hour in miles. But if you go to Outback Australia, I'm not sure what the rules are now, but when I went to the Outback, oh gee, a good 20 years ago, it was unlimited speed open speed limit so it's like the autobahn down under you can just drive as fast as you feel you can um yeah and that was pretty crazy because um we have what they call road trains in australia i don't know if some of you've seen them on outback trucker type shows and stuff like that but um uh what you call uh semi semi trailers um imagine um 12 trailers on the back or whatever like insane amounts of trailers and um them just going flat chat as we say in australia wow yeah. that's dangerous um leanne but, puts uh, fried eggs on her waffles i do too oh there you go sorry i'm just looking i just had a fear that a spider just ran up my leg tickle tickle oh <sighs> That's another thing about me. I'm um, arachnophobic too. I just. Oh, well, me too. Don't, don't let me have them anywhere around me. Mm. So everybody's enjoying that. There's the speed limit <laughs> here in Texas. The average speed limit is about 70 miles per hour. And we have some roads that are 80. Okay. Yep. So they, yeah, for us, 100 is the number and that's on the big main roads um, in general, in, in towns and everything um, that would be 60 kilometers an hour, which in miles would be about around 37 mile an hour. Um, if you were to, in fact, um, in recent times, a lot of um, councils now um, are dropping the speed limit down to 50 when you drive through a town and around residential areas and stuff like that. It should be a little slower in the residential. Tiny Tim yeah. wants to know, do you use yellow mustard as a condiment? Yes, we call, um, generally we call it American mustard. Hmm. Um, I guess because over here we we do, um, she ran up my leg. Um, <laughs> I wanted to let you know that that's what that was. <laughs> over here, so the mystery we... has been solved. There we go. Um, oh, you know what? I think it's a random. Sorry, everyone. Just one second. It's this might look terrible, but it's your beard it's... tickling your ankle. It is. It is. It's actually what it is. I'm trying to catch it and I can't. It's when I was playing with my beard, I must have loosened. So uh, this long strand has come out like, where am I? Like this far away. And it's been dangling on my leg and freaking me out the whole time. <laughs> so it is your beard. So it was my beard, but um, 
but anyway, we were yeah. So in Australia, we we do use various mustards: French mustard, Dijon mustard, um, English mustard, and yeah, what we do is actually have what's called American mustard, uh, which is the yellow mustard. Um, I mean, so is D Dijon mustard's yellow as well, and but yeah, we have yellow mustard, and that's generally what. In fact, the hot dog I was talking about earlier, I had a squeezy bottle of American uh, mustard, and I squeezed that on my hot dog. But it didn't make it to the beard. Only the ketchup made it to the beard. Yes, yes, it was no yellow. I was fighting with the the pink and the red, and yeah. Well, Daz, I want to ask you, since mm -hmm. we've had all of these wonderful questions from everybody in the chat, I want to ask you, do you have a question for me since you were my guest for my quickie tonight? Oh, man, I I wish I could have prepared for that because I would have asked a real doozy. A doozy. Um, you know, we didn't tell everybody how you how I got my nickname Fantails. Not everybody in the chat well, might know that. Okay, well, or you're better explaining that. the story than me, so... Um, if I hold up, I okay. Well, first of all, I'll tell for people that don't know. This is fantails. They're an Australian lolly or candy, as people say in your part of the wood, your neck of the woods, part of part of the wood, part of the world. And it's a a, a semi hard caramel with chocolate on the outside, and then the wrappers, which you can't see because of the green screen, have movie trivia around the outside of them. And they started in Australia back in the, the 1920s, 30s. So people would go to the movies and to get people to buy their product, they had the trivia so people could open up the wrapper and read the trivia. And so that's what a fantails are. Then one night when I was live and Alicia was in the chat, take it away, Alicia. Well, it backs up a little bit to Daz teasing me before he had his live because I was in the process of getting guinea fowl here on the farm. And I said how excited I was that we were getting guinea fowl because they made funny noises. And I said the noises that the females guinea, guinea makes. And it's buckwheat, buckwheat. And he kept saying in the chat, how do they sound again? And I was falling for it. Like three, four times I fell for it. I was like, oh, they say buckwheat, buckwheat. And so he kept doing it. I was gullible enough to keep doing it. So when he was on his live and he was talking about lollies and talking about the fantails, I wanted to type in, how do, how do uh, fantails sound over there, Daz? And when I typed it, I was in the middle of staining my porch outside. So I put the paintbrush down and I typed it in and it did an autocorrect on me. And it came across in the chat as, how, how do your fantasies sound over there, Daz? And poor Daz read fantasies, and it was supposed to say fantails, and he he just stumbled verbally, like he tripped over himself so much because he couldn't he couldn't believe what he was reading. It really threw him for a loop. He was getting embarrassed. I think he turned a little red, and I'm trying to type fantails, fantails, and I think once or twice it still came up as fantasies. <laughs> And he was so embarrassed. And I was trying to fix it. It's fantails. And it just really, that's the time that it really went off the rails. And I, he was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. And I, was, I didn't want to do that to his live because it was a good live. And I was trying to be respectful. And here I'm talking about fantasies. And I was, I was typing, you know, Daz's wife is going to put a hit out on me because she's going to be upset. Because who's this woman over in the States doing this? So from that day on, oh. he decided that my nickname would be Fantails. I will forever oh, be known as Fantails. So, so now that we've done that, is that your question for me? Um, yeah, that's oh man, I, I that's wish not I could question. have prepared. It was just the story. I know. I wish I was. Oh, I so wish I was prepared for this because I could have really got you with something good, you which could. would have been fun um oh gee i don't know um i wanted i want to know something about you in regards to this is this is so trivial about getting to know someone but you're quite good with your 
general knowledge in, say, entertainment and TV and music and stuff, was there was there a part of your life where, um, I don't know, did you take comfort in entertainment and focused on that more than anything? Or you how do you have, yeah. It's interesting that you say, did I take comfort in entertainment? Because growing up, I didn't have a lot of avenues of entertainment. Mm. Much of my childhood growing up, we really didn't have TV. Uh, we really didn't have uh, music except for church. Um, I can remember, you know, some music growing up. I just, I was not allowed to listen to. So I didn't have a lot of that. So I think once I kind of hit that teenage years where I was starting to be able to listen to music on the bus on the way to school and then got married, I think I did kind of drink it up like a sponge. Um, yep. We didn't celebrate holidays growing up. And so okay. I just started just immersing myself in things like that. But there's also this really strange part of me where I will, like, I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but a song will come on the radio somewhere and I'll be like, I know who that is. Yep. And it's some obscure name. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and I, the one I reference a lot is sometimes the song will come on and I'll go, oh, that's Petula Clark. It's like, who knows who Petula Clark is? But yeah. You know, it's just, it randomly pops in there. And just like earlier, uh, Papa Jim and I were watching something on um, on YouTube and a picture popped up and I didn't know who the person was. I have no idea who the person was. It was an mm. older picture. And I just looked at it and said, is that Otis Redding? And it was, mm. but I didn't know. Um, yeah. I am not a basketball fan at all. I don't yep. know basketball people at all, but I went one time with my sister. We were at a pizza place and they had the sports on and this picture came up. I said, is that LeBron James? And it's like, and it was, but I'd never even seen a picture of LeBron James. I don't know who yep. he is. Yep. So I don't know why some of this weird pop mm. culture stuff pops in my brain, but I've never even seen yep. the person. Yep. So are you triggered by, uh, how do I explain it? Um, do, can you associate events with um, music or TV memories or mm -hmm. all the other way around? Um, mm -hmm. That's something I tend to do. I'll, oh, gee, um, of course I've gone blank now, but I could hear a song and think immediately that reminds me of, Oh, I don't know. I wasn't born, but say Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, and um, I could hear a song and know exactly where I was when I heard that song forty yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, events, and I know that people talk about you know the grassy knoll and where I was when I heard all that news and stuff. But it's like, yeah, I can remember what direction I was facing as yeah. I watched the Challenger space shuttle incident. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, yep. I remember the detail so well that it's like I know what direction I was even facing as I sunk down to the coffee table to watch. Yeah. And how many years ago was that? You know, almost 40 years. So yeah. just weird things like that. They do. They pop into my head at really random, weird times. Mm. But I also I think uh, music and movies and, and I'll share this with you, Daz, and, and I think it'll probably make a lot of sense about who I am and how I tick. But um, I was an outcast growing up. I was awkward growing up. I never fit into the social circles growing up. Um, so I started using humor as a way to try to fit in. Yeah. Yep. And when I'm super duper uncomfortable is when I'm most inappropriate <laughs> and random, but yeah. I started using humor that way to try to get people to at least accept me. Even if I was the fool, I was in the group. And if that meant knowing some of the funnier lines from movies that I could throw out every once in a while, or knowing some of the, uh, the 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 songs that the kids knew even though i wasn't allowed to listen to them i think that's how i started integrating myself into social circles 
And it's, it's something I never got rid of. And my very best friend will tell me, she says, I saw a picture of you and I knew you were uncomfortable because you kind of ham up more when you're uncomfortable in a situation. That's, it's my defense. Mm. So music and movies and things like that play into that a lot because it is that yeah. pop culture. It's that center thread, that, that common thread that I can use with everybody. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Look, I, I was bullied when I was in primary school and high school and stuff. And I took a lot of comfort in um, going home and watching TV and I guess um, living, living this fantasy life through the A-Team and um, Battlestar Galactica and, you know, all these types of things. And um, yeah, so for me, I mean, I, I don't know why I knew this, but I used to trip people out. This is going back, I don't know, I would have been a teenager, but I used to be able to trip people out because I could recite the TV guide. <laughs> I can I see could, it in my mind. I could sit there and say, okay, from 7 a.m., it's Good Morning Australia, then it's Here's Humphrey, and then it's blah, 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 then it's blah, 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 blah. And then on the other channel, it's this, this, this. And, yeah, I I guess I got comfort in those types of things. And then I would use, I guess, humour from TV shows and references to TV shows and everything as a... Um, uh, like as a deflection or... Well, like um, what Grace and Fire says here, a defence mechanism. It's a defence mechanism yeah. for us. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so now, so I need my, I'm getting old. I need my glasses to read the chat. I, um, I feel the same way. Yeah, so I guess with my music and everything, that's why it's all in my head now. It's, um, and TV shows and everything from the old days is, I guess, because it was such a big thing to me back then and it just doesn't go away. And, but even now, I still, I, since doing this YouTube channel and everything, I watch way less TV, way less TV now. But yeah, one of my pastimes was I would always have the TV going with something running in the background when I was working or doing stuff. Yeah. See, and like I said, though, we didn't, we didn't have that growing up. I remember getting in terrible trouble one time for standing on my bicycle, looking into somebody's window just so I could watch Three's Company because I was not allowed to watch Three's Company. I remember coming home from school. So in the, the counterbalance of this, of oh. using it to get into the social circles, is then I'd pay for it when I got home because I remember singing Rod Stewart when I got it's home, just like humming, humming while I was doing the dishes singing Rod Stewart and I got in a lot of trouble for singing Rod Stewart <laughs> stuff because yep. I was not to be it. And to me at the time, it was an innocent song. Looking back at it now as an adult, it's like, that was a really naughty song. And I can see why my mom and dad were so upset with me. <laughs> yeah. It's um, this is totally going in another direction, but it's, um, when you mentioned Three's Company, um, that reminded me of like when I was talking about the office earlier. Um, it's so funny seeing how I don't know if you guys are aware of how many shows in America were actually originated in other countries. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so for me, when I grew up, um, Australia had its Australia had its own industry for TV um, in the seventies when I was a kid. But it was also cheaper for them to import a lot of television from overseas. And we got a lot of television from the UK. So um, I'm just trying to think of things you could relate to. But um, I'm sure, Alicia, you'd know Benny Hill. Um, you've heard of Benny Hill. Yeah. But, yeah, so we grew up on a lot of um, UK television, TV series and stuff like that. And then... Um, I would then go on to see like Three's Company and Three's Company, for instance, is a direct clone. It, it evolved into its own 
beautiful thing. What a classic that was. But that was actually from a TV show in England. And, yeah, it was so cool to see all these different versions of the same show um, from our point of view over here. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's it's actually, you know, just based on everything that we're seeing over in the chat, it's it's something we're all kind of relating to. So yeah. yeah. I think a lot of us a lot of us uh take the music and those types of things and internalize them like that and then just to socially cope. It's a coping mechanism. I definitely I definitely use music as a um uh yeah, a coping mechanism. Um um comfort um it's familiarity it, yeah it's a it's a foundational thing it, i think in, in a way it, it keeps us grounded to who we are and where we came from and, and like i said it keeps us grounded it's a familiar a familiar thing um and i know the the older i get the more i feel some of that slipping and so you try to hang on a little bit tighter yeah. yeah. And, I mean, you know, for instance, uh, Papa Jim and I the other day were sitting here and we just put on an old episode of Green Acres. Oh, wow. And, you know, we enjoy what. And is it cheesy? Absolutely. It's cheesy, but we love watching it because it takes us back to a time where we were when I was a lad. I, I remember seeing yep. some Green Acres when I was growing up and some like Gilligan's Island when I was growing up. Yeah. Little things like that every once in a while. Um, yep, okay. Oddly enough, when I grew up, when I was little, my parents actually, a lot of the times we had tapes and I, I grew up on like uh, Baby Snooks and the Shadow Nose. Okay, uh, those I'm, old, I'm lost, I'm those, those are old radio, old radio okay. stories from, you know, the 30s and the 40s. Uh, and the Andrews Sisters and the Glenn Miller Band, uh, Roger Miller. I grew up on all of the old standard stuff. Yeah. And uh, and I was allowed to watch I Love Lucy. So I think that's why sometimes wow. I like the whole 50s kind of yeah. vibe because that was that was kind of the extent of what I had as a child. But Baby Snooks, Baby Snooks was funny if anybody in the chat had ever gotten a chance to listen to Baby Snooks. It was just an old, you know, back when they would all sit around the radio and just listen to the to the nighttime stories that would come mm. on petticoat junction. I see good night, Leanne. Yes. Love the Andrew sisters. I just want to live stream yet. And I don't show myself on videos. Oh, dragonflies. My humor comes out being sarcastic a lot, but not meaning to, Oh, I must've missed something. You're good. Yeah. You're good. But just some of the comments in chat and this is something where I wanted to take my channel, but I haven't because of the old, the algorithm and everything, but um, I really want to explore, not explore. I, one of the main reasons I started my channel was because um, like a lot of people that are saying, um, I've got some very serious issues with anxiety, depression, PTSD and agoraphobia. And initially I wanted my, and I still do want my channel to, show people that I used to be in a routine where I would sleep for endless hours and climb out of the bed, not acknowledge my family, go into a, a recliner and put on the TV and either play a video game or watch TV, feel miserable and think bad things, eat rubbish, go back to bed, repeat over and over and over. And then... I discovered gardening and or not discovered gardening i rediscovered gardening and the satisfaction it gives me and how that gets my mind off things and and then from there i went onto this channel and discovered that there's a community out there and um interacting with people started to happen and now i'm here doing this and just all the people out there that uh, that are shy and stuff and feeling miserable and everything. I just really want to encourage everyone to keep up with the chats and talk to everyone in chat. And, um, you know, some people 
as I think Donna was saying, don't want to show their face on camera and stuff like that and everything, that's fine. But maybe after getting confidence, chatting with everyone and hanging out and helping each other out, um, that will come and there'll be good times ahead. And um, um, I'm losing my train of thought here. But well, yeah, I, I think it's important to note that, like you're saying, everybody keep talking about it, putting the chat and stuff, because we realize we do have a commonality. Yeah. It's something that we all struggle with to a certain degree. And your story is not my story and my story is not your story and neither is exactly. anybody else's in the chat. But we all have a story and we all have these uh, these anxieties and these hangups and these things that yeah. either trip us up long term or short term. But then we stumble forward and we get past the stumbling block and we move on. And yeah. it's it's actually something that I was discussing a little bit with uh, Lisa from Yogi Hollow Farm in a side chat is um, my my homestead, my little farm here is my sanctuary. This is where I love to be. This is our yeah. this is our yep. refuge. But I'm a very social person in all of my awkwardness. And being yep. on the farm has, it's closed in on me. Yep. And it was a wonderful place to be. And it still is. I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression of what I'm saying. Um, I'm starting to get to the point where I want to go out and travel again. I want to do some vlogging yeah. stories and share those with you guys. And yeah. because what happened to me is once we got here and I was all caught up in getting my animals and starting my homestead, then I was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, and yeah. It, it was a grim outlook for me. But I beat it. But then I sat here for over two years. Like you were saying, Daz, I get up and I come sit in my chair and I'd sit here all day and I would wait for Damocles sword to fall. I'd wait for the other shoe to fall because with my diagnosis, I was losing people right and left in that community that had the same yeah. diagnosis every day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. well, it came back and got them. So I guess I'm next. And you sit there day after day, uh, after day, after day, and you're just waiting for that twinge in your belly to be that cancer coming back. But yeah. one day I snapped out of it and I thought I need to get up and not be this way. I have to live again. So I started the garden. I started doing things around the farm. I looked into getting this YouTube channel started. I've met all of you wonderful people. I've got a bot if somebody could grab it. Um, uh, it's done. I got it. Thank you. So, you know, little things like that. We all have those, those things. We all have those stumbling blocks. And something I try to tell myself all the time, I can look at it as a stumbling block or a stepping stone. The choice is mine. So yeah. I've gone from that, I've gone from that stage in my life, sitting in my chair where I've got the stumbling mm -hmm. block to now trying to make it that stepping stone. And that's why I want to start doing the traveling and the fun things and stuff in the cupcake pinata mm -hmm. and, and going to ice castles and all these things I'm doing because I'm more than homesteading. I'm more yeah. than the canning yeah. and the crochet and the things that I do love to do. And I want to yeah. get out there and start doing that again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important that um, not everyone, you you can't have everyone sharing their private business and thoughts and everything, no. but anyone that can, I really do think that if you can share your experience and the positive ways things are helping you, because I've now since... I first started talking about my situation. I've had people message me privately, email me and make comments and stuff like that. And there's people out there in all different situations with different illnesses and home situations and stuff like that. And a lot of them find comfort in being able to relate or talk to someone. And it's look, I'm trying to say, everyone needs to know that they're not alone and it's not just them and they're not i don't know what the word is they're not they're not an outcast in society because there's something they might have an issue with or whatever um there's other people that might have a similar thing or the same and um yeah just communicate and try and maybe 
approach somebody in private and see if someone's willing to talk in private and discuss these things if you can to try and help yourself cope and it's it, yeah, we, it just, we're all alike in that fashion but we're all unique in the story and how we deal with it and so like you said yeah. you don't have to talk about it you don't have to talk about it with us you don't have to talk about it with anybody here but you know your own limitations and you know your own comfort zone so when you are ready to talk about it take that step talk to somebody that will will allow you to bend their ear for those few minutes and, but you know, yeah. you know when you're ready and, and when it's right. And don't let anybody force you into thinking you need to do that before you're ready. But I guess acknowledge when it's there and act on it yeah. with confidence. Because again, we're all in these types of situations. We all have this. I had somebody message me on Instagram and say, look, I'm really sorry to bother you, but I just want to tell you that I can't leave my house and everything. And you spoke about it in front of all the people and what you're embarrassed and this and that and everything. And, you know, yeah, I was uh, for a very long time. And it's, it, I won't say it still is because part of my healing hopefully is acknowledging that it is what it is. And, um, but now I'm in a private conversation with someone that I will never reveal their name. And, no one would have a clue. I didn't have a clue that this person was in the same situation. But now, hopefully, that I've put myself out there, they've approached me, and now that person is finding comfort in the conversations we have and maybe poking fun at each other about not being able to go to the store and asking someone else to buy a solo loaf of bread or whatever. And right. Um, but I'm so glad that, I've made a YouTube channel and there's at least one person out there that is hopefully now having a bit of a better life mentally, at least because I, I put myself out there. Cause you put and... yourself out there. It's, it's like I was saying to Lisa um, earlier today is, you know, you don't know when you're going to be the light at the end of somebody's tunnel. Yeah. It, you were the it's... light for that person at the end of their tunnel and yeah. now they can joke about it a little bit. So that goes for everyone, every single person watching this in chat now and watching the replay and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just either open up to other people if you can or accept other people's stories or make yourself known that you are willing to listen because um, I'm sure there's people out there that see other people in the chat or on channels and they think, you know, that's a nice person that they'd like to talk to or something. So you know what, just approach them and you don't have to give them your entire life story and stuff like that. But if you can see that there's possibly something there that relates, maybe strike up a conversation and see if you can have your own sort of little, I don't, I don't want to say therapy session, but, um, you know, maybe work together and get something positive. Um, and you know, sometimes you can just reach out and say something to somebody that doesn't even have to be related to that. You could just send out just, of course, just a, a greeting or a, a, yep. a nicety can make all the difference in the world. And I had shared in a story before Absolutely. that I had participated in this thing called Operation Beautiful, where at a certain time on a certain day, you were supposed to take a bunch of little sticky notes and write little, little terms of affirmation on them and stick them around. It doesn't matter if you're out in public or at your workspace. And I wrote a whole bunch of little stickies and I put them all over computers, all over work. And I did it stealthily. And I started on one end of our work complex. And by the time I made it back to my desk, there was a young man at my desk and he was holding one of the notes. And he said, did you put this on my computer? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he started to cry. <laughs> he No, he hung his head and the tears started falling. And I was like, are you okay? And he says, thank you for doing this today. And it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Cause that was a thing. You can't say you did it. Yeah. He says, I was, I was going to go home and I was going to end it today. Oh, he was man. going through a bitter divorce. He Far was in custody of his kids. He was planning the end of his life for after work that day. But because of a little heart-shaped post-it note and me saying on that little post-it note, I remember exactly what I wrote. And I didn't know I was going to put it on his computer i just wrote a whole bunch of them out ahead of time with affirmations and i didn't even pay attention to what i put where 
but the one I put on his on his computer monitor that day, it said, you are loved. That's all it said. Yeah. And it kept yeah. him from going home and ending his life. Yeah. That's and now fantastic. He's, he's married. He's got custody <laughs> of his kids that he thought he was going to lose. And he's got wow. you know, his, his bonus kids that he got in the marriage. His life is really good right now. And I'm not saying this to pat myself on the back, but I'm saying it that just that little reaching out and saying, hi, yeah. I want to say hi today, or how are you? Or I noticed this. It doesn't have to be about yeah. the topic of what that person may be going through. And, and as I say that, I realize there's people I haven't reached out to recently and I need to do that more. But sometimes the timing's right and sometimes delay in timing is right as well because it needs, sometimes it comes at a perfect time. Yeah. But, you know, it's an important conversation to have. We all have these things. None of us, we're all, we're all imperfectly perfect. Yeah. I, oh man, I had a, I had a psychologist um, appointment yesterday for a couple of hours, and um, I made a joke to Alicia actually that um, what what better preparation could I ever have for being live with Alicia and being questioned than than seeing a psychologist for a couple of hours beforehand? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, prepared myself well. But um, but I said in that, in all honesty, um, YouTube in my last i think i'm up to 10 months on youtube now these last 10 months on youtube i've advanced more in recovery and feeling a lot better about things than any medication and medical professional has done in the last what three years odd three four years um like we all we all say oh this community blah blah, blah. you know it's good and everything and but it is, it's, um, it's proof that, oh man, well, for me anyway, that so many people have helped me in private messages and commenting in chats and videos and stuff like that. And um, we all can make a difference. And it's really important that we just keep on doing what we're doing and just keep it up because it is making difference out there to different people in different ways. And it's awesome. And thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you to everybody that, that has this, this interwoven threads of our lives. And, and you were talking about how this has helped you more than the medication and more than the medical field. Well, the medication isn't personally invested in you and yeah. your doctor as much as they'd like to be, or as much as we'd like to think that they are, are only personally invested to, in you to a degree. But the people who are in your social circles that get to know you and grow to love you and care about you as a human being, that's where all of those threads weave together. And yeah. that's where it, it becomes that word, like we just said, community. It's, it's, it is the community yeah. of caring. And it's, it's like um, I had said something earlier and somebody said that they liked that we said we're imperfectly perfect. And that's the bridge that holds all of us up together is acknowledging that and being there for one another. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very, very grateful to the people that I have turned to and can turn to um, in private for advice and um, just putting up with me sharing how I'm feeling about something at the time or whatever and stuff. I, I never had that for a long time and that's not healthy and keeping it inside is not good. So yeah. Um, there's people well, yeah. watching this now. Keeping it inside is its own form out. of cancer. I think you have to get it out yeah. and let people take that burden for you. It's and burden might not be the right word um, because listening to a friend yeah. is not a burden. But it's like that song, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. I always thought it was about weight. You know, as a teen hearing it, I thought, boy, people are poking fun at him because his brother's fat, but he's carrying him and he ain't heavy, he's my brother. It's not the weight. It's the humanity of his relationship with that person and, and, yeah. and shouldering it for them. And so if I were to put it into the context of, you know, some of the little chats that you and I have had, Daz, when you've yeah. had those moments and you're saying, not having a good day. 
you aren't heavy, Daz, you're my brother. It's it's not a burden for us to be there for each other. And there's times when I've come onto our chats and I'm like, I think things suck for me today. And everybody kind of props yeah. up and then we all throw funny gifts at each other and emoticons yeah. and and we kind of get through that stumbling block that has now become the stepping stone. It's yeah, I I um I feel like I'm a bit of a burden sometimes on unloading onto like say Alicia for instance in private on Instagram or something and but um having said that I want other people out there to know that they're not a burden if they contact somebody and try and talk to somebody and I mean don't send messages every hour on the hour for three days straight that might be pushing it a bit but um you know people out there to help and to listen and communicate and try and get it off your chest and yeah just don't keep it inside it's just it's not good um yeah just talk that's what I'm trying to say. yeah talk. talk um there's a beautiful yeah. thing in vulnerability allowing yourself to become vulnerable is a beautiful thing but I think there's a stigma in our society that tells us that we can't allow ourselves to be vulnerable in opening up and sharing these things with each other. But it is a beautiful thing and it is it opens the door to the healing instead of keeping it all trapped in and letting it fester. Yeah. Yeah. So look, for a lot of guys out there, um, a lot of men, it's I know for me for sure, for a long time, I'm not going to a doctor. I I, yeah, I'm not going to go talk to a doctor and ask for help or whatever, but, oh, man, when I did and when things got really, really bad and I finally opened my eyes to what was going on with me, it was terrible. And, yeah, thankfully, I went and got some professional help and it started me on my journey. Like, I'm nowhere near ended with my journey, but... I just want all the guys out there and I'm not trying to make it a, a man woman thing, but a lot of men are very much I'm a I'm a I'm a as we say in Australia, a bloke. I'm a bloke. I'm not going to see a bloody doctor and all that sort of stuff. But do it. I mean you really need jump onto the helplines and stuff like that if things are getting really bad because um people out there, you know, worry about you and you may have people that need you and well, everyone has people that needs them, but yeah. Talking. Just talking and being in. there. Yeah. Talking and being there and, and recognizing that like, like we said earlier, Daz can say something and I can say, Oh, I understand. Well, I don't, I don't understand what he's going through. I can empathize what he's going through and I have my own story and he can empathize what I'm going through, but it doesn't mean he's lived it and he knows it. But just the fact that we can acknowledge that I hear you and I understand yeah. you're going through something. And I've been through something in my own life where maybe we can bounce things back and forth. Um, another thing I really want to feel like I need to throw out there is anytime somebody reaches out to you and they're saying, I'm feeling this way. You need to acknowledge that their feelings are theirs and they're valid. And don't say, yeah. oh, don't feel that way. Don't feel that way. Well, now you've just invalidated how they're feeling and then it closes them back up again. Yeah. In, instead of saying, oh, let's talk about it or I'm here for you or what can we do to make you feel better? But um, it's it's one thing I picked up on and I don't remember exactly when in this time in my life it was, but you have to say, I understand, I hear, I'm here for you, but don't ever say don't feel that way because it invalidates the person and they won't share anymore. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I noticed that um, mental health is coming up a lot in um, live chats and conversations and stuff. And I think that's a good thing because it's quite clearly something that's out there in the community. It's quite wide widespread and it's really important. I think that, conversations are happening and people can not only maybe 
get encouragement but get advice and stuff like that and it's not swept under the carpet and um yeah like i don't mean for conversations to be a downer and stuff like that but as i said earlier just you know if we can help one person well sure um, and I, I think what coming full circle with it what started this conversation was music and isn't it something yeah. that music in itself touches on so many of these topics music isn't just a bunch of words and a melody it's people outpouring their feelings and yeah. putting it to music whether it's feelings of love or sorrow or despair or yeah. exuberance or exhilaration or whatever there's there's these emotions that come out in the words and in the feelings and the music that they set it to and those people were feeling it. We feel it when we hear the songs and we feel it when we share the songs. And I think it's wonderful that it all comes, it comes full circle in our conversation that you, we were saying earlier, do these things trigger you? They do. It's the music and yeah. it's the, and it's the TV shows of my childhood and my early adulthood that trigger things. And I'm not saying it in a bad way either. I, I have yeah. many more positive triggers for music than I do yeah. negative, but it started yeah. from the negative of me being socially awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying grace and fire. Um, thank you for touching on this. It's a topic near and dear to my heart. Yeah. It's, um, I guess, you know, some of us here with, um, a lot of us all have channels and we can use our channels in different ways and it's up to us what direction we go. And, um, but yeah, it's good to be able to, like I said, get messages and know that there's people out there that you can help or just make things a little bit easier. It's pretty cool. And and the other way too, I'm I'm glad people have been able to help me too. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a great community. Yeah. It's more than just a channel. For me, it's more than just a channel for you. It's more than just a channel for the people over in the chat. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's certainly family. not what I expected. Yeah. It's, right? I didn't expect to get a family out of this. Yeah. it's. Um, I think it's kind of a neat thing. Well, guys, yeah. why don't we leave it on that positive note? Who sings We Are Family, Des? <laughs> we I'm trying to sing. read chat. Oh, you're trying to read um, chat so you're not going to say who sings it? No, we are family would be um oh, oh, oh. oh sorry, what? I can't hear Me? you anymore. Oh, Shh. Is you breaking up? Are you breaking up? It, oh, my answer is Is it the yes, pointer sisters? So... Why do sisters <laughs> Did you get my answer? Yes, I oh, did. Yeah, cool. Um, you are actually, so intelligent. I, <laughs> I wouldn't have actually, I know the Pointer Sisters and I know a lot of the songs, but I actually would not have said Pointer Sisters. I may be wrong. That's just what came no. in my, my warped brain, though. <laughs> no, I was, it, Danny, it is. Is uh, Danny agreeing that it is? Um, yeah, I was, oh man, I can't think of who. Oh, it's so annoying when you can you can visualize people and a name and everything, but you can't grab it. But yeah, and see, that's something I struggle with. That is something I struggle with. I can do some of these songs and the movies, but the people in the chat, I can't always remember their names. And even if I write them down, I forget where they're at or I forget them. And it it yeah. has been a downfall for me with my channel yeah. because so many of us do really try to put that positive of getting to know everybody's names and i struggle it took me a long time to ask to learn your name it took me several oh. weeks before it finally stuck in my brain and i didn't used to be that way because i worked with the public i worked with yeah. uh the city the chamber of commerce and i worked at a school i know names but after yeah. chemotherapy and that yeah. that emotional and physical trauma names elude me now it's one of those crazy chemo brain things. So anyways, guys, let's leave it on the positive note of the sisters, sisters singing. We are family. sister sledge. See, that was my second guess. There you go. 
And, and I just almost slipped it before I read it. So, all right. We'll give the Pointer Sisters a break. Sister Sledge, we are family. Sometimes yep. I'm wrong and I can admit it. <laughs> thanks, Denny. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Daz. I had a wonderful time. Are you satisfied with your quickie? Did you have a good time? Yeah, I think there was some pretty... Um, Does Daz approve? Um, and where to... Daz approves. Good. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much for asking me. And yeah, it's been... You're so popular. I was on the waiting list for, I don't know, it must have been a good two to three months. So well, yeah, We got you in um, just on the perfect time for everybody to be here. It was yeah, good timing. So, as always, just thank you to everybody in chat. And, yeah, thanks, Alicia. Um, I hope I was okay answering questions. And um, You did great. Yeah. You did great. We learned a lot about you, and it was wonderful. So I'm going to cool. thank you, and I'm going to say good night and take you down off of the uh, the board here so you don't have any more pressure to answer any more questions. And we will no, see you next cool. time. And then I'll thanks. say goodbye to everybody. Good night, Daz. Bye. Let me see what I'm doing here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There we go. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We had a great time with Daz tonight. I appreciate it so much. And I, I apologize for not being able to keep up with chat. I can barely read what's going on. Sometimes I'm having to squint and I can tell my eyes are a little swollen. I've had this headache. But um, thank you so much in the chat. I hope everybody played nice in the sandbox. I know we had some touchy subjects today and I saw a couple things that made me go, hmm, I hope everybody is being polite, hashing out their differences and their conversations in a polite manner here in our chat and getting along and helping each other and being that family and community that we all strive for. Thank you so much for being here with me. I've got a video coming out tomorrow, another one on Thursday. Join us on Saturday where Papa Jim stuffs my muffin. We're putting muff money in my cupcake to go on a trip. And you guys have to come back on Saturday and help us name our wiener. I'm going to leave it at that. We need help naming our wiener. So if you want to know what that's all about, Saturday, 2 o'clock Central Time. Take care of you guys. Take care of each other. And have a blessed week. And we will talk to you soon. I'm not even reading the chat. I'll try to catch up after I say goodnight. Bye, guys.